Yeah, you guys. All right, here we go, guys. Good morning on a beautiful Tuesday morning, August 31st. We are rocking and rolling, about to start the fall. And I have a bunch of stuff for you guys as you start to think about the crystal ball and what does 2022 look like coming out of Mega Camp last week and to give you insights and some direction as to where and what you should be paying attention to in the direction of where your business is headed. Uh, but first up, I wanted to start with a, a couple things in and around um, what's going on in our world. And I wanna share with you guys a little bit of an insight. And the insight in the household that I grew up in was very much, and I'm gonna share a little bit of a parable with you, to whom much is given, much is required, right? And if you think about it in the past year, um, so far, year to date, we've paid roughly around $45 million in total commissions to agents across the three locations in KW Milwaukee. And year to date, that's up about 60%. Uh, it's significant. I mean, people are having a ton, a ton of success. Um, and to whom much is given, much is required. And as much as we possibly can, we're always trying to think about others uh, and how we can serve others at the highest level. With that, oftentimes, because uh, a lot is given in our world, uh, much is expected. And I wanna share three quick opportunities for you guys. A lot is going on in our world today. If you think about everything that's going on over in the Middle East uh, and supporting our troops, and, and there's a lot of needs around helping refugees come to the US and a lot of asks that have been had. I hope that you keep them in your thoughts, prayers, and in your giving. Um, but I wanna share three other things locally here that are gonna impact us um, right away. And I'm going to flip this over to Schweppe, who is very passionate around uh, the walk to end Alzheimer's and the impact it has across many people here at the KW world. And Schweppe and a group of unbelievably caring people at KW uh, have put together an awesome team to help support the walk to end Alzheimer's. So Schweppe, I'm going to have you jump on and give us a little bit of insight as to what's going on with, all, with the Alzheimer's organization. Schweppe. Good morning, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yep, looks like we can. All right. Are you muted, Schweppe? Can you, can you hear me? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Check, check. Schweppe, say something for me. Check, check. Are you there? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, go ahead. Rock and roll. All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Charlie and leadership team, for giving me a brief moment this morning to talk to you guys about two great ways we've got to uh, support our efforts in the fight against Alzheimer's disease. Just wanna give a quick shout out this morning to all the awesome KW ladies on this walk team that have busted their butts over the past few months, putting together a fantastic list of prizes for you guys for our online auction fundraiser. Ladies, you know who you are and we couldn't have done this without you. So thank you so, so much. We've got over 20 great prizes for you guys to bid on, donated by your peers and local business owners. Everything from Bloody Mary baskets to igloo coolers, bucks tickets, and even weekend Airbnb getaways. This is going to be our primary fundraising effort, and we're in a friendly competition against many other great Milwaukee companies like Direct Supply and Northwestern Mutual. I know that with our KW culture and your support, we can make a huge impact this fall. So bidding's gonna be super easy, guys. Just follow the link on the screen there at the bottom right of the slide. Oh, back one slide, there you go, Charlie, thanks. 32auctions.com slash KWAuctionALZ. Guys, just copy and paste that link and save it because you're gonna be sharing this all over the place. It's a public event. It's gonna be open for you to log on at any time from anywhere and make your bids starting this Thursday, September 2nd at 9 a.m. The bidding will run and finally close on walk day, which is Sunday, September 19th at 8 p.m. It's going to be great. Next slide. And of course, the second way to support us uh, this year is the culminating event, the Walk to End Alzheimer's. This event opens at 8 a.m. at the Summerfest grounds on the 19th. There's going to be plenty of time to network and mingle, so wear your KW and your ALZ swag. If you register as a walker on the KW team, you're gonna receive some stuff in the mail, like a sign and maybe a t-shirt to wear on walk day. You're not obligated to walk in any way, uh, but we encourage you to sign up anyway. So follow the link on the screen to join the team or to make a donation. There's gonna be buttons right there to join and register as a walker and also to donate if you'd like to do it that way. Uh, we'll drop that chink, uh, the link in the chat as well. 
so you guys can grab it. So don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, my phone number 414-305-0516. I'll put that in the chat as well. You've got my email. Don't hesitate. We're super excited about this and we'd love to have your support, guys. Thanks so much for the time. Have a great day. Schweppes, thank you. It, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to help support so many great organizations. And guys, as you think about the phrase and the parable, to whom much is given, much is required. Uh, I encourage you to find something you're passionate about. I know Schweppes passionate about walk to end Alzheimer's uh, and get behind it, whether it's Alzheimer's, whether it's cancer. I know my mom and I hosted Boys and Girls Club. Just find something you're passionate about, put your energy behind it, and you'll be amazed at what can happen when you put your time, energy, and talent behind something and those that you will come out of the woodwork to help support you. Cool. All right, next up, one other thing I want to put on your guys' <laughs> radars is September 15th. Uh, KW Southwest is hosting a golf outing and dinner for Cindy Coos. And Cindy is the Joan Reed slash Steph Connard slash Kimmy Herbert uh, equivalent down in the Southwest Market Center. And Sydney was recently di diagnosed with ALS. And it is a, a brutal disease that her and her family are fighting. And we are hoping to raise a boatload of money to help support her and her family. So Wednesday, September 15th, there is a golf outing. If you'd like to play, there's also dinner. I can tell you, but I can't reveal it. There is a celebrity MC comedian whom you all know who will be there as the MC for the event. It should be a ton of fun. Again, this is to support one of our own who's come down with ALS. Cindy has been a, a incredibly, um, she's been incredible she's always been willing to give back and serve others. And so we're using this as an opportunity to leverage our network to serve her and her family. So that is on September 15th, both the Alzheimer's and the uh, teed up for Cindy Coos on September 15th, I will send out in the uh, insights and weekly insights and resources weekly email that goes out uh, this afternoon. So stay tuned to that. Lastly, as you've been paying attention, a lot of stuff's been going on in the world with uh, as it relates to hurricanes and natural disasters. And I know Ida just hit uh, over the weekend and landfall and the impact that's had on many, many KW associates down in the Southeast region. Uh, I just want to remind the group because I know a few people have asked about this. KW Cares is an incredible organization that literally packs semi loads worth of, uh, of stuff to, to literally go direct into the impacted areas. Uh, last time we saw this in a major way was some of the forest fires out West. And before that was, uh, I believe hurricanes down in Houston. I know they were down in Katrina. Uh, it's a way for us to help support our KW associates down in the Southeast region who've been impacted by Ida. And again, to whom much is given, much is required. And, and, and what I would encourage you to is to find something you're passionate about. I know there's a lot of need right now in the world and a lot going on. Uh, so if you find something that you're passionate about, we, you know, please give of, of what you're able to, whether it's your time, talent, or your treasure, uh, because there's a lot of need going on right now in the world. And I would encourage you again, to whom much is given, much is required. And when we see uh, that a lot of people have had a lot of success this year, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that we give and we put back out in the world because it's one of my top three phrases in 2021, what you give to the world, what you'll get from the world. So I want you to think about that as we, is there a lot of need in the world we face today? Cool. All right. Next up, one quick update for you as it relates to the North Shore office over on Silver Spring. Reminder, uh, we started construction last week. We are well underway. If you uh, ever have a closing or a client meeting or uh, various other things, feel free to stop into the office to check out the old float life space as it is now being reconstructed in the office space. But just want to remind the group that that is going on in the background that we hope to have wrapped up by early November. So stay tuned for that. All right, Lindsey Vranick, I'm flipping it over to you for Tech Tuesdays all around how to close Facebook bleeds. So what do we got, Lindsey? All right. Good morning, everybody. So you've heard me talk about Facebook ads, how to create the ad, what sort of content to put in the ad. But today I really wanted to talk about a success story from one of our own agents, um, Kristen Schlingman. So she's been running Facebook ads for about a year now. Um, in total, she spent about $970 on Facebook ads. So that's a total of 34 ads that she's run. She's gotten over 240 leads from those 34 ad campaigns. That's about $4 per lead. And out of those 243 leads, she's actively working with three buyers 
One is under contract and set to close in September. And so the best part about that is that she's still actively following up with those 243 leads through a custom smart plan, her own custom newsletter drip campaign. And so I wanted to have Kristen on here to kind of talk about her process. What did, what did it look like to create the ad? What kind of ad did she run? Um, how did the lead, how did she follow up with the lead? When did the lead contact her? Um, and that sort of thing. So the next slide, I have a timeline of events. And so I'm gonna have Kristen come on and talk about what exactly did this look like from the time the lead came in, how did she nurture that lead into a client set to close? So Kristen, hop on and um, share, share your insight on this. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, yeah, so I am one of these people that am totally an immediate gratification type person. So this has um, been something that I've, I've wanted to work. Um, and I guess now I can say it does work. Um, so back in December, I ran an ad for a property in Grafton, um, a $500,000 property that I had listed. Uh, December 23rd, um, the buyer, Robert, reached out or clicked on it and I got his information and immediately I put him on a Facebook ad campaign, which I had titled lead um, Facebook ad leads. And automatically then he was receiving daily um, either an email or a text from the smart plan that exp um, asked different questions. Um, like, hey, I saw you were, you clicked on a property that I have listed. Are you looking to buy a home? And then no response, no response, no response. Um, finally, on December 28th, he responded. And it's kind of funny because um, the, the smart plan I had him on, there was one of the, it was a uh, pre-made smart plan. And so I didn't really look at anything too carefully. And the question was, uh, when are you thinking of selling your home? And <laughs> this was for a buyer. So anyway, so he responded back at that point and said, I don't have a home to sell. But then that was my end to start having a conversation with him. And um, on January 1st, he told me that he would be looking to buy in March. So at that point, I took him off that Facebook ad campaign and put him um, in, I kind of just put him on my calendar to reach back out in March. And in March, I put him on, I do an, um, uh, every two weeks, I send out a newsletter via email through smart plans and put him on that April 15th, he reached back out to me and said, I'm ready to start looking. And I helped him get a lender in June. Um, and July 15th, we were under contract and we're set to close in September. So throughout this whole time, he has been on, um, the, the smart plan I have, that's just, I custom made with, um, a newsletter going out every couple of weeks. So, and then the 240, um, three people, 242 other people I have are all on that neighbor, that nurturing newsletter that I send out every other week. So. That's Thanks kind of how it's gone. It's been a long process, but it's really been great because it's all automated. It hasn't taken me really any, you know, much time, which I think is really important because um, this isn't my, wasn't my primary um, lead generation process, but um, it can happen kind of in the background. So. Great. Yeah, Kristen, thank you. And just one other question, what sort of content do you include in that newsletter? So. I subscribe to Keeping Current Matters, and so I take the information from that and copy it in there, but there are lots of free blogs, free information that, you know, you wouldn't have to subscribe to um, any type of website to, um, to find information in the newsletter, but I just copy and paste their information right into my newsletter. So it's really simple. Um, I've helped a couple people do it, um, and I know, Lindsay, you are very well versed in helping people do that. So um, it's great. It's easy. Um, I have people comment all the time. Oh, I got your newsletter. Oh, we look at your newsletter every, every other week, blah, blah, blah. So it's quick, it's easy, and it's a no brainer. You awesome. know what the best part of the story is Kristen? What? Automate, automate, automate. Right. You did nothing but nurture the lead that you picked up from December 23rd to April 15th all through automation, leveraging the tools in command. And oh, by the way, July 15th, you got it under contract, you closed September 30th. Do you know what the ROI on that time is for her? 
like a million percent. Automate, automate, automate. Kristen, congrats. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for jumping on, Kristen, and sharing yep. that with us. Um, and speaking of automation, um, if you guys have been doing Facebook ads or if you've never done a Facebook ad, they have made it e even easier to automate. Um, so when you're creating that ad, you can actually set up auto tags and auto assign to a smart plan. So the moment you capture a lead from your ad, you can automatically have that tag set up the moment they hit your command database and you can automatically have them added to a smart plan. So whether that, that initial, um, um, it, initial contact is an, an email or a text message. Um, the moment it hits your database, they're going to get contacted. So that's a really great thing. It's under lead settings when you're creating that ad campaign. Um, so again, it's it's that speed to lead, you guys. It's it's right there, built into command now. So super exciting stuff. Um, and like Kristen said, it it works. Um, and so you guys. Tech workshops this week is kind of open office hours. So if you wanna talk about Facebook ads, if you wanna set up your own custom smart plan, kind of like Kristen did, come into um, either Wauwatosa today at one o'clock. Um, I am doing a North Shore tech training starting tomorrow. So this month, um, every Wednesday at one o'clock um, in the downstairs training room. And then same time, um, Thursdays, 11 o'clock um, out in Lake Country, right after productivity. So I'm just adding that additional tech training this month on Wednesdays in the North Shore. Guys, it's all about automation, 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 and the intensity and frequency in which you touch your leads in your database. And if you want to convert your leads at a high level and utilizing Kristen as a great example of sourcing a simple lead off of an internet, a Facebook ad. And then she, the, she leveraged that with the intensity and frequency of a smart plan to convert the lead. The ROI is hundred percent worth your time to figure out how to get it done. Kristen, congrats, Lindsay. Thanks for the insights. All right. Now guys, I'm flipping it over to Steph Kennard, who's going to talk to us a little bit about MLS fines and how to avoid, because here's something that's very, very interesting to note. We have an, uh, we are above average in terms of the amount of fines, the little nitpicky fines that we get from MLS. And we want to try and help protect your pocketbooks, pocketbooks from the MLS monster to come into your back pocket to take $5 here, $10 here. So Steph, what do these guys need to know as it relates to what they should be paying attention to to avoid MLS fines? Hi, good morning, you guys. Yes, um, so not too long ago, Maureen was informed by MLS that we are, our bro brokerage is one of the top offenders of MLS fines. So how that translates to you guys is MLS fines, mistakes equals fines. So I um, wanted to go over the top uh, violations and point out um, our brokerage's top violations. Um, so in all of MLS, um, address errors, um, incorrect expiration dates, incorrect list dates. Um, for us, we're putting in named prospects wrong. Um, incorrect items in our um, public remarks, um, and then early and late entries of our MLS listings. Um, so just gonna go over each one of these and help you guys avoid these super senseless um, and totally avoidable fines. Um, so in um, when we're inputting addresses, um, so the number one um, issue that MLS has seen is um, when inputting that street type, so when we have main street, main avenue, main circle, main court, um, we need to make sure that we are um, abbreviating those correctly. So um, street would be abbreviated to capital S, lowercase t, avenue, capital A, lowercase v, lowercase e, and et cetera. Um, so a good guide is to see how it's labeled in um, YREX and make sure, making sure that it's matching up to how YREX has it in the tax data. And then for those of us who are out on the west side, um, those street names that include um, directionals, we need to make sure that we're making it all one continuous uh, line. So you can see the example on point two, uh, making sure that we're not breaking those up um, between the different directionals. And then um, again, for those of us out on the west side, more important, um, when we have state roads, county roads, highways, um, all of that needs to be spelled out in the address line. So County Road 67 needs to spell out County Road 
67 versus abbreviating county and abbreviating road. Okay, next slide. Um, this is a big one, listing date, expiration date, and timing of entry. So we need to match what is on our listing contracts. Um, so when you're entering in that listing date, you're just gonna go and refer right back to your listing contract and, and input what you have there. Um, so it's not the date that you actually are entering it into the system, it's the date that's on the contract. Um, and likewise for the expiration date. Um, and then another thing that we've been seeing is um, agents entering it into MLS earlier than what's on the contract. So that's a hundred dollar a day fine. So let's say your listing starts on tomorrow, September 1st, and you entered it over the weekend, you're gonna get fined for every single day um, that, that was entered in early. So all super easy stuff, just totally avoidable. Next slide. Um, another top offense for our brokerage is um, putting in um, incorrect items in the public remarks. So this is the house description here only, you guys. No information about ourselves. Um, sometimes we'll see listing brought to you by X, Y, and Z. That's a no-no, you need to leave that out. Um, no open house information here um, and no showings begin on a certain date. You're not to put any information about when showings begin in the public remarks. Keep it to the house description only. And then lastly, um, named prospects. So again, MLS is checking against our uh, contracts, our listing contracts. So if you have named prospects listed on the listing contract, and then in MLS, you put that there are none, MLS is gonna flag that and fine you for that. So it needs to match up what's on the contract. So if we do have named prospects, we need to be marking yes in MLS. Um, and those are our top fines. Wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that. If you have any questions, please see me or Joni um, and we'll help you through that, okay? Yeah, guys, if you have any questions, reach out because our goal is to protect the little niddly uh, piddly wink fines here and there, but they add up over time. And the more, you know, it's like compounding interest, right? All of a sudden you had a $5 fine that turns into a $100 fine because you made the same mistake over and over and over. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Steph or to Joan. All right, guys, coming up, Kathleen Wooten, what do we got coming up with upcoming trainings and events and the, what these guys should be paying attention to and what they just came out of? Good morning. Um, first of all, let's go back to the last week with Mega Camp. Guys, this was an amazing experience for everybody that was there. A lot of content, information, and hopefully you took a lot of takeaways in what you can pour into your business to help grow. We're coming into the fall season now. Now is the time to work in your business to grow your business. Um, it was a great event, great venue. It was awesome to be around all of you agents. I saw some agents I haven't seen since before the pandemic. So it was really great to network and get back into space with everybody else. A huge shout out and thank you to everybody that helped make that a successful event. Um, overall, Mega Camp was 200 or 20,000 attendees. We had about 180 in our venue. There is over a hundred, hundreds and hundreds of hours of content and 50 solutions-based exhibit hall booths. So if you attended Mega Camp or you bought that virtual ticket, know that the content is available for you until October 22nd. You can go back and watch anything that you might've missed that you wanted to sit in on. And you can also re-watch anything you watched previously to really listen to some of those little tidbits of information. Um, the second day there was, or the first and second day, there were interviews and they were only about two and a half minutes long with Gary and Jay. Um, so it would be nice to kind of watch some of those and, and take some more notes and pour that into your business. Guys, also, if there was any content that was shared from Mega Camp in terms of slides or materials, you can also find that within the platform. So for example, in the follow-up email that I sent Monday morning to those that registered for Mega Camp, you'll notice that I attached the uh, market insights and industry updates for you. All of that can be found along with any other materials that were shared within the Mega Camp platform. Again, any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, Mandy, Diana, Kathleen, Lindsay. We're all here to help support you guys if there's other things that you want to take away from the Mega Camp platform. Um, and then this month, September, we have a lot of great. Um, more content for you guys to help you grow your businesses. Um, I want to start with um, Amanda and Janine. Are you guys there to talk about what you have coming up in your trainings? 
Yeah, we got Schroeder right here. Uh, I can't tell if that's on the You're screen good. or not. Hey, <laughs> so today for launch class at 1030, we're going to be getting back to your 411. Um, it's the end of the month. We're looking towards a new month and the rest of the year. Whether you have a 411, you've fallen off course, you don't know what a 411 is, or you just need to get back to base. This is a perfect opportunity for you. It's going to be workshop style, so we're going to do that while we're here today. J9, what do we got? We've got, so we discussed this two weeks ago, and interestingly enough, um, in order to have clarity on your goals, you have to know what your why is. So they asked for a why workshop, and your why is the reason whether you succeed or fail in your goals. So we're going to have a workshop on that, and five ideas to get more listings. And there is a golden letter that they talked about at Megacamp. Well, I now have in my hands the golden text. So I will be sharing with uh, the group Thursday at nine o'clock that golden text. Awesome. And then in uh, productivity out in Lake Country this week, Connie's going to be talking about scheduling and time blocking and those income producing activities, how to make sure they're on your schedule so you get them done. Um, also this week, next week, um, since we have no team meeting, I want you guys to look at the eighth. We have the color of real estate. This is the um, same content. It is a live um, class. You have to register to attend. It is free. But if you missed it the last time we had it or you want to rewatch it and get some more insight from Julia Lachey, definitely register and attend color of real estate. And then on Friday the 10th, we have Lead Gen Plus with Gene Rivers. This is a all day event. Um, I think it's about six hours. It's a cost of $59. But if you're looking for ways to increase your lead gen and some tips and tricks from somebody whose team sells, has sold over 1200 units, uh, definitely register and attend the Gene Rivers on the 10th. Um, other than that, lots and lots of content on this calendar. We have special guest speakers with the um, Thea Boss Systems Are Sexy on the 16th and 17th. We have Marty Miller coming on the 22nd for Command Your Database and Mastering Your Database. We have more Gene Rivers later this month. And then we have the Fair Hinton group with rounding out the end of the month with powerful client communication. So lots of ways for you guys to pour into your business. Guys, so much content in the month of September. And I'm gonna to touch on this again. Uh, here in a second, as we talked about, we're heading into uh, the fall period where we begin working on our business versus getting caught working in our business. But there are lots of things coming up to help you focus on working on your business in the month of September. One other shout out for you, every Monday at 10 o'clock, Gail Zeman over in Tosa is leading agent to agent. Come in from the weekend. If you got something hot and bothering you, or you need to talk through an issue, Gail is there to help support you guys and walk through and mastermind on Monday mornings at 10 o'clock over in Tosa for agent to agent. So feel free to check that out as well. All of the content in September is wildly incredible, guys. There's a ton of stuff coming down the pike. We will make sure to send out the September training calendar to you here in the insights and resources follow-up email. Lastly, Wooten, what do we got? Yeah, so if you notice September's content's really based around lead gen and systems and your database, and that's all because we have Bold coming back in October. Uh, we're gonna be doing this live in person and you'll notice here the times, the classes are a little bit shorter than they've been in the past. And that's to help facilitate you and your business and make it a little easier for you to get in person bold. Um, so we'll have more information when we have the information to give you, but um, for right now, mark your calendars for the seven weeks that bold will be back in person. Guys, and I get it, we've talked about this before. Uh, bold is not, is whether you agree with it or not is for everybody, because at the end of the day, here's what I materially know. And I will show this to you, the facts. The facts are those who attend bold see about a 30 to 40% increase. And I will use Andy Stillman, who's sitting right in front of me as an example. The years that Andy goes to bold, his business is up 30 or 40% versus the years he doesn't. And he knows that, and he hates going. He knows he must attend, right? Because the ROI on that spend is 10X what he would have spent. So I will sh I'm gonna be pulling all the detail and the data to show you why you should be investing your time and energy in bold coming up this fall in October. So stay tuned as we have more details. All right, guys. Here comes the meat and potatoes for you. I know many people attended Mega Camp last week, and in the very beginning, there's a three-hour market update. 
I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version here in the next 10 minutes, maybe less, of all the things that I caught from the market update around the crystal ball and what's coming from the macro economy in the macro part of our industry to tell me what do I need to be paying attention to to set myself up for success heading into 2022, right? And again, I alluded to this earlier. But to understand why we have so much coming down the pike as it relates to training and education in September and October is because you need to understand the patterns of the industry to understand the seasonality to it because the industry should dictate how you spend your time. What do I mean? And I talked about this two weeks ago at, at team meeting. Right now, we're entering a period of fall cleanup. Fall cleanup means you to be working on your business to set yourself up for 2022. Because what will happen is the holidays shows up and you have the time of winter renewal where the separation is in the preparation. What do I mean? Anybody who's thinking about selling or buying in the spring market didn't wake up on March 15th thinking that they were going to sell their house. They knew that they wanted to start sell. They knew that they were thinking about the process during the fall in, in the winter. And your job is to make sure that you clean up your database and clean up your lead generation sources and your approach to your lead generation so that the winter time frame, when that seed has been planted in their head that they either want to buy or sell, you're ready to take advantage of it. How do I know this? Those that missed the first quarter of an opportunity in 2022 will not be able to hit their goals in 2022. That's a fact. And I can show you 10 years of data and very specific people. When they miss their first quarter, they miss their annual goals. So that's why we're hammering this home. So as you sit here thinking about all the training and education and all these opportunities that are available to you that sometimes can be overwhelming, and trust me, I get it. The reason why we hammer this home during the fall is because you cannot afford the opportunity to not take advantage of it now so you can set yourself up for success come first quarter. Now, having said that, what do we need to pay attention to and what some of the insights and my key takeaways from last week. Let's take a look at the industry as a whole. This year in 2021, we're estimating about 5.9 million single family home sale units in 2021. What does this mean? What does this mean? It was the fifth, it will be the fifth best year on record in residential real estate sales. Okay. 20, if you look at 20 versus 21, it was up about 5%. Now, everything you hear in the media is all around the real estate industry is going gangbusters, gangbusters, gangbusters. But what has always been my word of caution since the spring, it's a deceiving market because last spring when the market was down 80% and the industry was up 100% or 80% or whatever it was, everybody was thinking that like, oh my gosh, homes are essentially burning to the ground because they're going so fast. The truth is, is we had soft comps in the spring. Now we have tough comps in the fall. And roughly year over year, we're going to finish about a 5% growth rate, right? That's a very different story than what you're hearing in the media where people think it's up like 20, 30, 40%. It's up about 5%. Yet it's the fifth best year on record in residential real estate. Now, looking ahead to 2022, where do they predict it? They predict 2022 will come in roughly flat versus 21. What does this mean? It means nothing more than it's going to be the sixth best year in residential real estate in 2022. So why is this important to you? You should be thinking to yourself right now, working on your business, how am I going to set myself up to take advantage of the sixth best year predicted in residential real estate? Because if you wake up January 1st and you come to that realization, you're like getting on the highway on your bike while everybody else is in a Ferrari. Don't miss out on the opportunity to take advantage of what should be another, a very, very strong market in 2022. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about seasonality. Here's what you need to understand, right? The far left graphs are 2019. The orange is first half of the year of percentage of sales. The purple graph is the second half of the year percentage of sales, okay? What you need to really understand is about half, you know, about 47% in 2019 showed up in the first half, 53% showed up in the second half. Now, go ahead to 2020. There was a little bit of abnormality in the seasonality because of what happened with the pandemic and stay at home orders. So we saw roughly a 40 60 split versus the first half versus the second half. What you'll find here in 2021 
is we're shifting back to a normal seasonality schedule where roughly half of the real estate is conducted in the first half of the year and roughly half of the real estate is conducted in the second half of the year. Now, here's what you need to understand though, and because I'm hearing this every single day with agents and clients alike, people are saying, I'm feeling a slowdown. And we've talked about this a lot over the last couple of weeks. I'm feeling a slowdown. Here's what you need to understand as it relates to seasonality and historical patterns to seasonality. Spring of 2021, this year's spring was an above average spring market in terms of the level activity in the market, okay? Spring was an above average market. So what does this mean? As we head into the fall of 21, which is going to be a below average fall because the spring was that much more robust. So people feel as if, oh my gosh, it's slowing down. It's not slowing down. It's because of abnormalities that we've seen in seasonality to the industry. Now, one of the other things that you have to understand too, from a mental standpoint for your business, for personally and professionally, is you got to remember, if you look at this, Fall of last year was way above average in terms of level activity. Then we went into spring of this year and it was above average over normal seasonal activity. That's why you as an agent or teams or admins or whatever role you play feel as if you're a little bit burnt out because we've essentially had 12 straight months of above normal activity. So the fact that we're going back to normal sized activity across the seasons feels as if it's slowing down, but it's because you're coming off of a 12 month sprint on a treadmill. Does that make sense? And I want you to make sure that you guys understand that is, is it's not a slowdown. It's just that the market's right sizing and recapturing and going back to historical seasonal patterns. Okay. Here we go. Now, when you look at home prices, home price appreciation, what did we need to know as it relates to the slide that was shared here? The yellow line is a 4% trend appreciation line. Here's what you need to know. Trend lines never lie. We've historically had a 4% appreciation. What happened was, is when 08 happened, home prices dropped dramatically. And so it fell off of the trend line. However, when you look over the last 10 years from 2010 to 2020, and then again into 21, the market always corrects itself over time, okay? The market always corrects itself over time. I want you to remember that. What do you need to know is the trend line of 4% appreciation, the trend line never lies. So a pro um, the other thing is, is we've caught up from 4% appreciation in the last 24 months when you look at it again, 4% appreciation over the historical period, because over the last 24 months, we've seen a 30% appreciation, which is close to insanity. Okay, close to insanity. Now, the other thing that you have to understand as it relates to the scale of the appreciation of the growth is the scale of the appreciation of the last two months is the equivalent of a single family household's income. What do I mean by that? is the home value appreciations over the last two years have gained so significantly, it would be as if a dual income family added a third person to their income level because of the, in, of the net equity gains they gained on the appreciation of their homes. Make sense? There, I'll say it again. The net equity gain people have seen through price appreciation is the equivalent of adding a third person to your household in terms of income. So for example, in our household, we have Megan who makes an income as a real estate agent. We have Charlie who makes an income through Keller Williams. And it would be the equivalent as if Chase Stale, my four-year-old, picked up a $50,000 a year job, okay? That didn't happen, but because of the appreciation we gained in our home, we gained net equity gain on our balance sheet, okay? Now, the prediction moving forward as it relates to appreciation is they, they believe that this will continue to rise for the next year, few years. What I mean by that is that they definitely see appreciation continuing in 2022. However, there will be a correction within the next five years. So 2022, they continue to see market will continue to appreciate. However, expect a, a correction here shortly. So... Very important pause or stopping point was, what do I say to my buyers and sellers? At the end of the day, because you hear it, 
Oh, what's the perfect time to sell? Okay, what's the perfect time to buy? I'm afraid to pay too much. Is the market is all about timing. Over a seven to 10 year period, you get out of every market correction, okay? So as an observation of, of history, it's not a sales pitch. Over a seven to 10 year period, you will either, you, the market will correct itself where you will gain appreciation over time where you won't lose money. So now let's go back to the same slide and use 08 as an example. If you look at 08 or 09, or let's just go to 11, where it was that it's, it bottomed out at 166K in annual median, uh, the annual median price of a home. If you go seven years later to 18, it more than corrected itself and it was above the peak before the crash. So the point of this is when you say, what do you say to your buyers and sellers? Listen, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, whoever it may be, do you plan to sell in the next five years? If the answer is no, don't worry about the market because the market will correct itself. And again, it's not a sales pitch. And it's an observation of history and how price, home pricing and home appreciation corrects itself over a seven to 10 year period. Make sense? Cool. Now, looking ahead to new listings, what do we need to be paying attention to? They're expecting about a 23% increase in inventory before the end of the year across the marketplace, right? How, um, if you wanna gain more listings, what were their two tidbits as it relates to gaining more listings? Educate your database on the value of their home. Be the economist of choice for your clients because it will allow them to make the decision on when they want to sell. I'm going to repeat that. If you want to gain more listings because they're expecting 23% increase in inventory before the end of the year, educate your database on the value of their home. Be the economist of choice for your clients. And by providing them resourceful, and factual data-driven information, it will allow them to make the decision on when to sell and for you to take advantage of the inventory that's coming to the marketplace. When you look at months of supply, what's going on? A balanced market is six months. We're still historically low. If you look at June of 2021, we're at 2.6 months of supply, right? The federal government's one lever to, inc to uh, increase inventory or to slow up home value appreciations is interest rates. Okay, so what's going to go on with interest rates and what do they see with the one level that the federal government has to control both appreciation and inventory is um, they don't they see that rates will start to creep up here this fall and they believe they're forecasting that they'll get to about 3.5 to 3.7% over the next six to 12 months because they're gonna to wanna to increase the rates to, to slow the appreciation curve and also drive more inventory up in the marketplace because right now there's not enough inventory to serve the demand. Now, that could all go out the window due to uncertainty with world events, okay? So you could predict, you could try to predict where rates are gonna go. And it, again, it's the one lever the federal government has to control, but all of it could go out the window because there's a lot of world events going on right now. Okay, so just something to be paying attention to as it relates to rates and how the federal government pulls the rate lever in order to impact our industry. Now, as it relates to the economy, this is what everybody wants to know. Oh my gosh, is there a bubble coming? Is there a bubble coming? Guys, here's what you need to pay attention to. GDP on a quarterly basis, going back to quarter one of 2015, what you see here was a pretty consistent growth quarter over quarter. Last year, first quarter of 2020, and then second quarter of 2021, we saw it absolutely fall off a cliff with the introduction of the worldly pandemic. What you also saw in quarter three of last year in the fall, and we very much felt this in our industry, was a whiplash effect, okay? Historically, uh, it has taken many, many months, if not years, to come out of a recession. It has never once in the history of economic times seen a recession recover this quickly. When you look at GDP, the federal government likes to see a 4% growth on GDP. Or sorry, they like to see a 2% growth on GDP. When they see anything above 4%, it means the economy is absolutely roaring. There's one problem to that. We'll start to see inflation. So your dollar today won't be nearly as worth what it is, or your dollar today is worth way more today than it will be two, three, four months down the road because inflation will start to creep up, especially with some of the economic policy and the amount of money the federal government's been pumping into some of the unemployment benefits and PPP and some of the other things. Now, 
Also, as it relates to GDP and why is this important to our total macro economy, a lot of this is being led by the consumptions of goods, not services. Okay, so we need to understand besides the fact that the real estate industry, which is a service based industry is doing really, really well, the majority of the of the economy right now is being driven by goods. Okay, now I'm going to tie this all in together in one second. As it relates to GDP and consumer confidence, though, here's a really interesting thing. It's its all-time lowest it's been. There's a ton of uncertainty, okay? Uncertainty is driving a lack of confidence to predict human behavior. So when confidence is shaken, we have an opportunity as agents to show up and shepherd people through our process, right? As it relates to buying and selling homes. This is the utmost importance as it relates to care calls as, as it, to your database. Why is that important? Here's a really good example. Another service-based provider. When was the last time your dentist called you and asked how your life was going? They never have. How about your attorney? Has your attorney called you? No, you only call your attorney when you need them. The point of the being is, is that we are in a service industry that is uniquely positioned to help take advantage, not take advantage, but to help serve people through times of uncertainty through our fiduciary responsibility. We have an unbelievable opportunity to be the service provider to our clients, knowing that consumer confidence right now is extremely, extremely low. Make sense? All right. Now, unemployment. Why is, again, why is all of this important? Because you need to understand there isn't a bubble. The underlying economy is very, very strong. Unemployment skyrocketed to 8.1%. Why is this important? The federal government likes to see unemployment rates around 6%. If you look back to 08, at its peak, we hit 9.9% .9 unemployment across the US. It took us six years after 2008 to get below a 6% unemployment line of the target line for the US. If you look here, Last year, it peaked at 8.1%, and it took us less than that, less than a year to get back below 6%. Again, the, the theme here is the underlying economy is very, very strong. When you look at it from a comparison standpoint, again, using 08 as an example during the Great Recession, there was a very prolonged period of unemployment. This is just using data from January of 09 through December of 2012, where it finally got below 6.7, you know, around 6.7%. Last year, you saw in the spring that it peaked at 14.7%. And already in June, we're sitting at 5.4%. Again, underlying economy is very, very strong. Why is that? Well, what, what a few notes here is the speed of the bounce back has been remarkable. And again, the underlying economy is very strong. Why is this happening to us in, in terms of what does it look like for the economy? Again, this gets back to why is the housing industry so strong and why is this impact me and what do I need to be paying attention to? Here's what you need to know. Unemployment right now in June of 2019 sits, or sorry, June of 2021 sits at 5.9%. Again, below 6%. However, there are more, the bar graph are job openings in the millions across the United States. There are more job openings right now in the history of the United States than ever before. 10.1 million jobs available with one of, uh, we're below 6% unemployment. What that means is they, the federal government views the economy as almost being fully employed with tons and tons of opportunity. What is it gonna lead to? It's gonna lead to wage growth, okay? So two factors. The reason why there's so many jobs available in the US economy is one, roles that went away and two, industries that are doing well in hiring more people. Wages will go up and the competition for talent will increase. So if you're seeking talent, competition for talent will increase and you need to make sure that you're not being short-sighted as it relates to what you're paying your people because competition for talent is increasing every single day. The differentiating factor in business is your ability to capture talent. Okay. All right. I feel like I'm going on for a little bit, a little while, but there's some very important nuggets going on related to this. Lastly, affordability. When you look at changes to median household income and median home prices since 1975, median home price appreciation is the orange line. Median household income is the blue line. Why is this gap important? Here's a few things you need to know. It's the greatest disparity we've ever seen. Okay. Appreciation of homes and appreciation of income. It's the greatest disparate rise. Uh, it's the greatest disparity we've ever seen. Net wealth creation has been astronomical. 
again, so we look at how we help and serve families and how we can provide education. The easiest way to help families change multi-generational wealth is to get them into a home because prices over time always appreciate and you're looking to help people gain net balance sheet wealth, right? And because of the disparity of income levels have separated so dramatically, and we've talked about this over the last couple of months of the K-shaped recovery, because incomes have separated so dramatically, the top income earners have the ability to overpay for houses without feeling the impact. I'm gonna repeat that because I know many of you are feeling this. Top income earners have the ability to overpay without feeling the impact. So there you go. Industry update as it relates to our industry. The macro economy as to what's going on. Those are the cliff notes that I gave you in just about 15 minutes. But I wanted to make sure that we touched on this again so that you guys had speaking points to be the economist of choice for your clients because your clients are going to come to you and ask you questions and you need to be very confident in your fiduciary response, your fiduciary ability to respond to your inquiries to be able to capture leads. Because guess what? I'm very willing to bet if you're not able to instill the confidence of your buyers and sellers as to what you understand about the market and where it is heading, if you don't have that confidence to instill in them, they will absolutely find the agent who will instill it for them. So don't be the person that loses the lead because you don't have the confidence to help them understand what's going on. All right, lastly, as we look ahead to your businesses in 2022, I wanna plant a few seeds as it relates to your business. E-commerce is a percentage of total sales skyrocketed in 2020. You can see it skyrocketed at almost 16% of total sales across all retail industries in 2020. It leveled back out looking ahead here in the last three quarters of 2021, but it's still elevated from where it was historically. Why is this important? Because digital adoption during the pandemic has never been higher, okay? This is an example they utilized in the presentation around Chipotle. Okay, Chipotle, as you see it, is a burrito company, fast food restaurant. Chipotle, as they see it, is a technology company. Another example, Domino's. Domino's views themselves as a technology company. Everybody laughs when all these real estate companies now are talking about being technology companies. It's true. You have to be digitally based and physically enhanced. You have to be digitally based and physically enhanced to take advantage of the market of the moment. And how you live digitally will be able to directly correlate to your lead conversion and your ability to help serve people get into homes. So you need to be thinking about how you're digitally based and physically enhanced, right? And they utilize, again, I would encourage you to go back and watch it. They utilize the example of Chipotle and Domino's and how they leverage their tech platforms to have their best years ever. So there you go. Those are my two nuggets for you in planting my seeds as it relates to the total overall economy and where I see the industry headed to give you the cliff notes of a three hour conversation in all of about 15 minutes. I'll make sure to send all the slides out in the insights and resources weekly email that will also include my little yellow nuggets that I had on all the slides. If you have questions on any of it or you wanna dive deeper, feel free to hit me up. I'd love to take you for a beer and we'll chat over it longer to help you guys get a little bit grounded deeper to gain confidence to help instill in your clients. All right, wrapping it up, market insights over the five county metro area. Where do I see it and what's coming on down the pike? Here you go, uh, showing time activity over the last couple of weeks. 2021 still is outpacing 2019. Again, 2019 is the barometer I'm utilizing because of the wonkiness of the 21 market uh, that we talked about and alluded to earlier. Here you go, units under contract. If you look over the last 24 weeks, units under contract has remained relatively stable since April of 2021. When you see here is the, uh, the average over the last 24 weeks has been 626 units that went under contract. Last week, there were 632. Two weeks before that, there were 625. We're still, really till, we're still relatively in a very high activity market as it relates to units going under contract. So guys, don't slow down now. New inventory is beginning to dip below the latest 24 week averages though. You're starting to see the fall season take into effect as it relates to slowing down for the fall and has how we talked about the fall maybe a little bit slower historically than it had been. Now, units under contract still remain relatively high, but that's all a lagging metric. Leading metric in terms of what do we look at in terms of moving forward as it relates to the fall market is all around new unit inventory. So 
I would start to predict in September, we'll start to see units going under contract slow down because inventory is starting to slow down. Total inventory, good news here, it continues to rise, still really, really low at 5,500 units, 5,600 units last week. Again, if I compare this to where we were sitting in April of 21, it's a 32% increase. So the positive news to it all is there's more inventory on the market. There's still a ton of activity being had. And the fall is the reason why we begin to work on, the mar uh, on your business. And the reason being is we're starting to see signs of the fall market starting to show up, which means the activity should begin to slow down slightly. Guys, a ton of content for you. I know I was coming at you fast with a ton of information. My job is to instill confidence in you so that you can be the economist of choice for you and your clients and able to convert your leads. Thanks guys for showing up. Reminder, next week, Tuesday, there is no team meeting following Labor Day. So enjoy your week next week. There's tons of training and education to pour into in the month of September. And if there's anything you need, know that the leadership teams are here to serve you. Guys, I will, uh, Lake Country Crew, I'll let you jump off to your Lake Country meetup, North Shore, Tosa Crew. I will flip over to new listings and buyer needs. Give me two seconds. Thanks, guys. Have a great week.